I am so excited to be bringing you a very special edition of The She Word. This is a mini series that we're gonna be running over the next 12 weeks. And I'm here with Petra Elul Mercer, who is from JA Malta, but also from Gemma. And you contacted me because you wanted to talk about the topic of one of those relationships that we all have, and is probably one of our most mismanaged relationships. And probably everybody's thinking, what are we talking about now? But you want to talk about money. Yes, yes, exactly. The and you had such a, a, a the relationship with money. You have such a passion to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So we had a little conversation about it. And I want to kick off right away by talking about this relationship and, and more, why do we need to talk about this relationship? We all have a relationship with money. We all use money. A lot of us have a bad relationship with money. And I think some of the things that we are going to be talking about over the course of these 12 weeks will certainly apply to myself and touch an awful lot of people's lives. But let's start off with why do we need to talk about this relationship? Well, the way we, the, first of all, we need to talk about the relationship because it's a question in itself. It's a question because we don't really think about it. When we talk about the relationship that we have with money, we need to start off, first of all, from, from our past. We need to look at the way we were, the values that we have about money, uh, where did those come from, um, the habits that we have, where we taught about money in school when we were younger, or did we learn a lot of it from, from our parents? The, the environment that we were brought up in, the experiences that we have gone through, all of this matters so much because our past, which sort of sits quietly at the back of our, of our brain, plays an important role in the financial decisions that we actually take now in everyday life. But isn't it just a case of you work, you earn money, you pay off your bills, you pay off your, your credit cards and you go shopping. Isn't that what a money relationship is? No, no, of course it's not. <laughs> oh dear, so, so this is where we start with, with yes. Trudy Kerr. No, no, there's, uh, there's so much more. The, you start off with being aware, okay? You need to be aware how you're spending your money. And um, that is one of the key things which is lacking. And it's so scary and so worrying, especially in the society that we live in today, which is so fast paced, that we don't have the time or the awareness of understanding why we are taking the decisions that, that we take. And you know, you've got economists that tell us that we are rational people, but both you and I know we're not rational people. We take the most irrational decisions constantly. So when it comes to, to the way we manage our money, we need to stop, we need to think, and we need to understand, do I really need this? Or is it just something that I would like to have? So it's really going back down to the basic concepts of what is a need and what is a want. But you need to also understand the importance, how is your money going to make you more money? So the element of saving and saving, what are we going to do with that money that we put aside? How are we going to put money as aside from what we earn? What are we going to do with it? How is the money going to make more money in order for us to have a better financial well-being, less stress? And these are all questions that, yeah, we know we should do them, but for us to take action on what we're thinking it's uh, a completely different conversation. So we're going to be talking about this over 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to start off with just before we go any further, mm -hmm. before anybody switches off from this conversation, this can quite often be an uncomfortable thing to talk about. Yeah. And it can also be something that, f for instance, for me, I've been saying, I'll talk about it later, possibly for the last 25 years, yes. because I'm finding myself at 48, you know, not really having spent an awful lot of time thinking about this. So first of all, why do we not address this relationship with money? And who is this conversation that we're having applicable to? Who does this apply to? Mm -hmm. Well, it applies to everyone, 
okay? Um, uh, there isn't one size fits all when it comes to the skill of how to manage your money. And uh, as you mentioned, sort of talking about money is very taboo for reasons unknown. And it's important that we have these conversations, especially when it comes to our kids, so that we ensure that we don't pass on the bad habits that we have, the way we, we spend and manage our money to, to our kids, because they're always around us, they're within our environment. But the interesting thing is that when it comes to, to, to money, um, and we always immediately go into art oh, about budgeting, it's about saving, but no, it's not, we, we know that we need to do these things. But it's not only about that. And then the worst thing is that it's not applied to, to myself because maybe I'm a CEO and I run a company or I'm an accountant. I know these things. But just because you know how to make money, it doesn't mean that you know how to manage it. So there are those responsibilities also within that sentence that um, uh, going back to the awareness, how am I spending my money? What about my impulses? You know, I work really hard, so I deserve this. But do you really need it? And then it goes into impulse buying. But most of the time, we're not even aware we're doing these things. So listen, as I said, we're going to talk about this over the next 12, 12 weeks. weeks. I want to understand, before we go any further, what are you aiming as the outcome? What, what, are we, what is the point? I'm, in sh I'm sure that this is a part of the empowerment conversation that we have here at The She Word, but why is this particularly applicable to women? Why would a woman need to think, I'm going to take hold, hold of control of my finances? I know that we've got a particular conversation about that, but in general, what, what is the value of this for women? Well, look, if we look at uh, statistics, all right, um, um, in general, women are weaker than men when it comes to how they manage their money. But also in terms of understanding the financial side, they would prefer to pass this on to, on to men or on to their partners. So there is this, um, this gap that we really need to look into. And women are more vulnerable, unfortunately, when it comes to managing money because that sense of freedom that, uh, that, they're, that they're looking for and that they are entitled to, unless you have this, the skill to understand that, it's, it's quite difficult. And you, I feel that many, of, many women end up feeling very trapped as well, um, either trapped in a job, so you're stuck because you've got certain lifestyle commitments and certain payments that you need to do. So financial well-being is equal to financial um, empowerment, financial freedom. And that's why I'm sort of here, sort of appealing to you that it's important for, for women to understand more that there is a skill that can, it can be taught, it can be learned, um, and it can be practiced. And this is uh, the reason basically why I'm here, because we are giving these sessions to, 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 to women to be able to help them to identify and become even more aware of how they're managing their money, what tips and tricks they could, they could use, what tools there are, um, available in order to improve that. Brilliant. Petra, I'm really looking forward to getting involved in these conversations over the next 12 weeks. Thank you.